Hi, I'm David Shukoff, Director of Education at Manhattan Theatre Club, and welcome to this next segment in MTC Education's online family drama playwriting series. In this segment, we're going to explore the idea of creating characters, characterization. Now, a reminder, I'm imagining that the viewers of these segments are family members who are watching together, but if you're a high school age student watching alone or a high school teacher, um, watching with colleagues or friends or by yourselves, uh, these activities are readily adaptable with just a little bit of ingenuity. I'm going to try in each segment to include things to do on your feet, um, as well as provide uh, activities that require just a, a keyboard or pen and paper. And each segment can be viewed as a standalone, kind of one-off, um, but taken together, the whole series will guide you in the process of writing a short play. So, characterization. Strong, vivid, memorable, contrasting characters are theater's lifeblood. We need characters to be large and bold in their psychological and emotional makeup. They need to be true to life, but bigger. And contrast is, all, is all, also a key. So, bold, colorful, contrasting, those are our watchwords. Now, in this segment, I'm going to introduce two approaches to creating vivid characters. I'll walk us through the uh, instructions verbally, and if you'd like to have a reading copy of them, we've also provided links to a PDF of the instructions which appear below this video. Okay, so we're going to begin with an on-your-feet physical activities for which you need to clear as much space in the room as possible, move the furniture aside, uh, and get as much distance between yourself and everybody else as possible. I mean, we're all experts at social distancing these days, right? Um, and now I want you to begin walking around the room. I know we're all in small New York City apartments, but do the best you can. Don't bump into each other or the furniture. And as you're walking, um, we're going to introduce this idea of leading centers. So, um, leading centers, characters can be thought of as having a center of energy, a leading center. And we're going to explore that idea in the following way. So you're walking, and as you're walking, I want you to imagine that your leading center is your stomach. So all your energy, your center of energy is your stomach. So you're walking around the room, your stomach is leading you. What's happening to you inside and out? What's happening to your physicality? What's happening to your walk? What's happening to your spirit? How are you feeling as you're being led by your stomach? Heighten that, deepen that feeling. Whatever you're feeling, whatever your physicality is, make it stronger. Okay, and now we're gonna shift centers. We're gonna make your leading center your forehead. So keep walking, but now your forehead is your leading center. So your forehead is where your energy is. It's what's pulling you through the room. What's happening to your walk? Is it speeding up? Is it, I don't know, is it getting lighter or whatever? And also, um, what's happening to you spiritually? What's happening psychologically? Really explore that. Now, your knees are your leading center. So walk around the room, your knees are your leading center. What's happening to you physically? What's happening to your walk? What's happening to your posture? What's happening to your spirit? And now it's your nose. Your nose is your leading center. So leading from your nose, okay? Your nose is your leading center again. What's happening to your walk? What's happening to your spirit? What's happening to your body? Okay, and now back to neutral. So that was just a little excursion. You can keep working on this idea of leading centers, inventing others of your own. Keep walking, and now we're going to use a different set of images. Okay, so as you're walking, I want you now to imagine that you are 10 feet tall. Okay, you're walking around this space. Your head is scraping the ceiling or maybe poking through above, but you're 10 feet tall. And what's happening to you inside? What's happening to your spirit, to your, your way of being? What's happening to your walk, to your physicality? Okay, and now you're two feet tall. But I don't mean to crouch down. I mean, just imagine that you're two feet tall. What's happening to your walk? What's happening to your spirit? What's happening to your emotional makeup? You're two feet tall. Okay, and now you are wearing size 30 shoes. Your feet are size 30. What's happening to your walk? What's happening to your spirit, your emotional makeup? 
Really commit to that. Heighten and extend. Deepen that. Exaggerate. Your 30, size 30 shoes. Okay, and what's happening inside? And now imagine that your legs and feet are springs. Okay, you're walking on springs. So what's happening to your spirit? What's happening to your walk? What's happening to your character? Keep walking. Keep going. Okay, now go back to neutral. Keep walking. And I want you to revisit the image that worked most powerfully for you. So was it being 10 feet tall or leaning from your stomach? Whatever it was, go back to that image and really kind of commit to it. Make it strong. Make it vivid. And as you're committing to that leading center or that physical image, I want you to begin to humanize yourself. That is to say, you're going to create yourself as a character. So what's your name? Give yourself a name. What's your age? How old are you? What do you do for a living? Where do you live? Keep walking and keep committing to that physical image, but also humanize yourself. Name, age, occupation, dwelling. And also now give yourself a life motto, words that you live by as this character. Maybe it's no worries, be happy, or maybe it's what's the use or maybe it's when the going gets tough the tough gets going or whatever whatever words to live by your character has it find those f discover those and begin as you're walking with all this physical image i will just say the, your motto aloud and let that fill your spirit let that inform your walk walking through space saying your motto aloud and don't worry what anybody else is doing just really commit to that really commit to that okay and now do notice the other folks in the room and begin to greet them with a simple hello as your character. Okay, you're greeting each other as you're moving through the space as your new character. Okay, terrific. And now you can stop. Okay, so I hope that exploration was fun and interesting um, and uh, illuminating in some way. And now when I'm, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to pause this video and do the following steps. Step one, each of you in turn is going to introduce yourself as the character. So your name, your age, your occupation, and your life motto. Share that with everybody in character, one at a time. Then I want you to partner up. Get with a partner um, who is most dissimilar from you, just whatever that means. And I want you to imagine that you and your partner are related. So you're like siblings or I'm not your real life relationship. And this is your imaginary new character relationship, uh, parent and child, but the opposite direction. I want you to imagine that you are related, but also that you're at odds with each other, that you're somehow you, you've had a quarrel or you haven't you know, had a falling out. You haven't seen each other in years. So with that in mind, get to as far from each one another as you can and cross the space. And when you crisscross, as you crisscross, greet each other with each other's first name only, your character first name, of course, not your real first name. So you're just going to say it and make clear as you cross, of course, what your character is, that you're related and that you're at odds with each other, that you're antagonistic. So do those three steps, general introductions, partner up as a family relationship and cross as sort of adversarial, as odds. And then once you've done that, you can try all the different combinations in the room as well. And then what I want you to do is watch the video clip that accompanies this video. It's from the 2019 Manhattan Theater Club production of Donald Margulies' uh, Long Lost. This is the opening scene. The character of David is played by Kelly O'Coin. The character of Billy is Lee Turgeson. Watch it a couple of times, see what you notice, and try to connect what you see in the video to the work we were being that we've done so far. And then Let's all, after you've done that, come back and we'll go on with some next steps. Okay, see you soon. Jesus! <laughs> Late lunch? Oh man, you should see your face! Fuck is the matter with you? I'm sorry, Davy boy. This isn't funny. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you can't do this, Billy. I'm sorry. You can't just pop up out of nowhere <laughs> and ambush people. I said people. I was sorry, okay? Hey, don't I at least get a hug? <laughs> <laughs> that was warm. 
I didn't know you were in town. I wasn't. I just got in. You might have given me a little notice. Why? So you could make excuses not to see me? No. I wouldn't have made plans for lunch. Oh, uh-huh. Hot lunch, was it? What? Work up a good sweat, did you? What are you talking about? You always change your shirt after lunch? I often do, as a matter of fact. Is that so? Yeah, I keep a fresh batch on hand. I sweat like crazy. Since when? Uh, since always. Isn't that funny? You shared a room with me for years. You'd think I would have noticed you're having a B.O. problem. <laughs> what are you doing here, Billy? Is that nice? I came to see you. Yeah, I see that. You need money? Is that it? Why do you assume it has to be about money? Because it's always about money. Not always. I haven't asked you for a cent in years. Well, can I drop in on my little brother without you getting old? I missed you. Fuckwad. <laughs> you think I don't think about you? I don't know what you think about. I think about you all the time. I think about mom and pop. You're my family, Davey. You're all I got. Yeah. And whose fault is that? <laughs> How'd you get in here anyway? What do you mean, how? Who let you into my office? You're on the front desk. Shauna. I don't know. Would she let you stay here? Yeah. By yourself? Yeah, by you myself. You could have been anybody. A yep. total stranger. I'm not a total stranger. I'm your fucking brother. Okay, we're back. So, uh, let's talk about the scene you just saw from Donald Margulies' uh, lo uh, Long Lost, uh, his family drama that MTC produced a couple of seasons ago. Uh, think about what you know for certain. Um, for example, what were each of the characters wearing? What's their family relationship? Well, brothers, of course. But um, what do you know for absolutely certain? And next, think about what you can infer what you suspect may be the truth, what you can say about, for example, their feelings toward one another. Why is Billy making such a big deal about David's changing shirts? What does he suspect? What does David suspect about Billy? How would you describe their respective physicalities? How do they contrast with each other? You can watch it again and see what else you notice. But I think this is a terrific example of the creation of two vivid, contrasting characters. Okay, so now here's another way to create a character, a vivid character, and it's something that you can do on your own. So go to the internet and find some interesting photo portraits. I found some great ones by going to Google Images and searching for photographic portraits. Um, scroll through and find an image that captures your imagination. Maybe look for someone who feels like they're from another world for, than yours, or somebody who's really disparate, dis, disparate and different from you. Um, don't, don't use celebrity photos. Go find somebody whom you know absolutely nothing about and study the image carefully. Um, what can you say for sure about the person in the image? What's the color of their hair? What's the color of their tops? Are they wearing shades? Are they wearing a uniform? What's, what do you know for sure? What color is the uniform? What, what can you say for sure? And then what can you imagine? What can you refer? If it's a candid shot, where are they going? Are they, are they on their way to someplace? Um, what are they wearing that you can't see, perhaps? What do you imagine is in their pockets? Um, and I want you to create a, a character profile for the image you've chosen. Turn him or her or them into a character using the uh, character profile PDF that's attached to this video. Okay, link to this video. So fill out the the character profile as best you can. Um, it's, it's, it's suggestions, it's not a requirement, but use all those, uh, those categories, name, age, occupation, where do you think this person lives? And, and so on, and, and life motto. And because we're doing, talking about family drama, really think carefully about what their family dynamic is, what their family relationship uh, might be. Are they alone in the world? Do they have dozens of siblings and myriads of cousins? Um, or, you know, are they by themselves? Um, just really invent a family for them. And now what I want you to do, once you've completed the, the profile as best you can is to write a monologue for your character. That is an extended speech in which they address a family member, someone they see every day or someone from whom they're physically or emotionally cut off, maybe even someone who's deceased. 
Um, but the theme that I want you to write on is to, in this address to another family member is there's something I need to say to you. Okay, so write that monologue and let your imagination soar. And when you're done, put the monologue in your virtual or physical family drama uh, folder. And also, we'd love to read and maybe share out some of what you've written. So post the monologue to your Instagram, tagging us at mtc underscore nyc, or you can email it to us at ed at mtc-nyc.org. Okay, so that's it for now. See you next time when we will focus on creating dramatic openings. Okay, see you then.